Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening. I'm Scott Beadle with Big Fox News. Look closely at this next image. Do you recognize the man that you're about to see? Elmira Police Department is asking for the public's help in identifying a suspect in a burglary investigation. Police report that Thursday morning around 2.30, the man seen here used a rock to break into the Dandy Mini Marts on East Church Street. According to police, the man then stole the inventory of Newports and black and mild cigars. If you have any information about the crime or know the man's identity, you're asked to contact the Elmira Police Department. Now for an update on Woodstock 50. Festival organizers have applied for a permit to relocate the concert to Vernon Downs, and that idea is getting mixed reactions from local officials. Oneida County Sheriff Robert Macchiol has voiced concerns with the planned date, which coincides with two other major events taking place in the area. Organizers had originally planned for a crowd of up to 150,000 people. Vernon Downs owner Jeff Gural said the festival proposed up to 65,000 attendees for the current venue, which is significantly lower than originally planned. At WGI, the festival had planned out four stages. It's unclear how the Vernon Downs arrangement would accommodate that setup. The concert is still set to take place August 16th through the 18th, which of course is now less than two months away. History has been made as an upstate New York man has become the first living Iraq veteran to receive the Medal of Honor. President Trump awarded the nation's highest military honor to Staff Sergeant David Bellavia of Lindenville yesterday. Congressman Tom Reed was on Frankly Speaking to talk about the ceremony which he attended. First Congressional Medal of Honor uh, live ceremony uh, that I attended and uh, to attend it for one of our local guys, David Bellavia uh, out of Batavia. Uh, you know, I would just tell you, he's a true hero, true, you know, you, you hear these stories of these people and you kind of read about them in books and, and then just you know, meet him, to see him, and to be there when the President of the United States drapes the Medal of Honor over his shoulders. I mean, it's just inspiring. I mean, and if anybody doesn't know his story, uh, they should look it up. I mean, he had his squad there. He had his family there. I mean, he, he put himself in harm's way in order to essentially save uh, his uh, colleagues uh, that were in Fallujah uh, with him in Iraq. And I will just tell you, um, that type of sacrifice, that type of uh, commitment to country, uh, to family. Um, and as he says, when we fight in America, uh, we don't lose because what we're fighting for is what we believe in. Olivia was recognized for his actions back in 2004 when he cleared an insurgent stronghold, allowing members of his platoon to escape and move to safety. Fallen State Trooper Nicholas Clark may soon be getting some lasting recognition. Lawmakers in Albany are pushing to designate a portion of I-86 as the Trooper Nicholas F. Clark Memorial Bridge. That legislation is being sponsored by Assemblyman Phil Palmasano and Senator Tom O'Mara. The Memorial Bridge in Stabenk County would pay tribute to the life and service of the fallen trooper, who died in the line of duty nearly one year ago. The designated section of the highway is located in Bath, half a mile away from the State Police Barracks for Troop E. The legislation has passed both the Senate and Assembly and now waits the governor's signature to make it official. Meteorologist Kim Walker checks in next with your Big Fox forecast. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. It's been a gorgeous Thursday with plenty of sunshine and warm conditions with highs in the 80s. Tomorrow gets even warmer with potentially reaching the 90s in the afternoon. This comes ahead of another storm system that will bring the rain back stormy conditions for this weekend and those temperatures will be slightly cooler as well. So here's a look at what you can expect. We're going to start off with some patchy fog, then partly sunny skies and it's going to be hot with those highs in the 90s. So that's going to be about 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Mostly cloudy conditions. Rain 
rain will be likely for your Saturday as that next cold front comes in and then those temperatures will start to cool down. There could be a few isolated, isolated showers remaining for your Tuesday and temperatures will be even cooler than what we will have on Saturday. Tonight we drop down to around 58 degrees in Elmi Elmira in Corning, 59 degrees, 60 degrees in Watkins Glen with some patchy fog developing tomorrow. A hot day with highs around 90 degrees. It may feel a little bit muggy outside as well with south winds returning 90 the high in Corning and also in Watkins Glen. Your seven day forecast calls for those temperatures dropping as we make our way into the weekend with those rain chances as well. 77 degrees on your Sunday. We'll start off in the 50s as we head back to work. Our high will be back into the 80s, 84 for your Monday with a mostly cloudy sky and then we'll remain in the 80s as we head into the remainder of the week and there will be some rain chances, maybe a few afternoon thunderstorms as we head into the middle of next week. That's a look at your weather. Scott. All right. Thank you, Kim. And thanks for joining us on Big Fox News. Have a great night.